All right, we got ourselves another showcase, our last showcase, unless they do a different one, but it's Zatan the Black we're going to jump into and talk about in this campaign video. So what we're going to kind of reveal and talk about today are some of the unit cards for the Infernal Firesworn, the Infernal Guard, um, the Demon Smith, some other characters there. We're going to go into a little bit of transparency on how the uh, labor system works, and then we'll also talk a little bit about... Um, the drill and how the drill kind of works in uh, a two kind of ways. It, it'll it'll drive you to certain locations, kind of like the Tomb Kings, but you can claim portions of the runes that you find for yourself or for the drill. Uh, so it does have to be built up kind of like the Vampire Coast uh, Harpoon. So that's kind of a fun little ditty here today, but that's all that we'll be covering. If you don't want to spoil this, you want to discover it for yourself, please just feel free to shut the video down. I don't want to ruin it for you. Um, you can find this linked on to the uh, Total Wars official um, a YouTube channel. I have this ahead of time, so I'm kind of just jumping through it. It'll be very, uh, I'm not going to watch all 19 minutes. We're going to jump to the parts. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to, uh, uh, reduce the volume here. So it's just pretty much me. And if you have not yet pre-ordered the uh, DLC, you can use the link in my description to the Creative Assembly, um, what's it called, uh, affiliate link, and that will get you a discount, the 10% discount that is all, that is active on Steam as well. You'll get a Steam key directly from CA, and it goes a huge way to supporting the channel. So thank you so much if you do use it or if you already have. Also, lastly, please do check me out on Twitch. You can find that linked in the description and the pinned comment. Um, I will be streaming this as well as doing a giveaway of the DLC once we can do early access uh, embargoes and stuff like that is all lifted. So be on the lookout for that, but follow me on Twitch because you'll be guaranteed an actual notification versus YouTube, which will maybe send you the notification. Who knows? Well, let's get started here on the campaign showcase for Zatan the Black. And we're just going to go ahead and press play. We'll jump through to this. Uh, we get a little preview of him on his Lamasu, which is sick. I mean, dude, like... This I'm going to show you a shot of like the armies and everything moving, and it just looks so good. I'm really hyped up for the Chaos Dwarfs. Um, it was cool to play Kislev. It was cool to play Cathay and, and the demons and everything, but I don't know, man. The Chaos Dwarfs are just such a different level of hype because if you're if you're a Warhammer fan like I've been for 20-plus years, uh, I, don't know, I was 10, 12 when I started, and I'm 35, right? Um, this was like such a colorful army in the... The fourth and fifth edition uh, rule books, and just to kind of see them brought to life now, and that kind of scope of the eighth edition, as far as the the emphasis is and everything, and seeing them kind of brought to uh, up to the modern snuff as well with the Tamarcon is just so awesome. It is so beautiful and kick ass. So let's jump into this. We're going to start off with looking at the uh, laborer mechanic. So it shows us our efficiency of our labor economy. And I assume that something like this is going to kick into the Dark Elves. I mean, it has to. It's very similar to the Dark Elf slave mechanic, but I mean, obviously very different at the same time. But the Dark Elf slave mechanic needs some help. So if we take a look at this here, we can see Blackwater has 0% efficiency, causing a huge anchor against everything. So we can move labor in and out of the province, and it will help with efficiency across the board. And this allows us to, you know, turn on new intake from new locations, do the different labor actions that we saw as part of the... Um, the uh, province management in the lower left corner, it says, like, oh, you know, use this labor cost and increase public order or whatever it was or uh, control, whatever it is. So we see we also have a labor surplus, too. So um, you get to really fine tune this to really help you out. And at the bottom here, let's kick forward a little bit. Where is it? OK, there it is. Ah, 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 ah. OK, except pending labor changes. So um, we are going to reduce some labor and increase some labor in certain locations you can see now that the labor is going to increase in black water and it's going to cost me 800 gold i apologize for the uh, windows media player little thingy here um, but that is going to help us out with our raw material production and you can see like the labor versus workload uh like okay we have 1800 labor but we need 1500 like that that workload balance so you get a really nice good idea of what's going on the efficiency and how that percentage changes the variance and the raw materials produced and whatnot so um, a nice system i like it a lot uh, i want to see what it's like in action though because i don't really understand it too well from these menus it's very nuanced or at least it's very like kind of like spoon fed without me having actual like relation or or, or uh, actual in-game application of this and how it actually kind of kicks out um, so let's move forward a little bit my my poor dog is 
post surgery just kind of groaning around here. <laughs> <coughs> Poor puppy. Now, um, so we have the drill assembly line, right? So as we move up, so what's kind of nifty here is that the drill. Did you see what that it gives? It locks recruitment of Chaos Dwarf warriors and dwar warriors with great weapons. And it also gives us income, helps out with raw materials and workload, as well as armaments. So it's actually a very nice building to have. Um, I think the Vampire Coast Harpoon gave income and growth, if I can remember correctly. I can't. <laughs> I, I can't remember it all, so correct me in the comment section below. So it's nice to see this as a very nice, strong addition to your economy, as well as something for the objective, right? And then we get the great drill of Hashut. Now, there are two different types of rune, major and minor. The major ones are in gold like this, and the minor ones are silver right here. And it's kind of cool because these borrow from a lot of the icons you see in the Chaos Dwarf book, in the Dwarf book. So it's really cool to see these icons brought into the game. The same with the icons for the actual factions and everything. So we'll kind of speed forward here. And there we go. I wanted that little kind of zoom in. So you can decide how this relic, this rune, is used. Do you claim it for yourself or do you use it for the drill? And part of the objective in the game is to put them on the drill, of course. And that is part of a, a much grander uh, scheme. So you can empower the great drill. Let's go ahead and let this roll forward. Um, well, there we go. So you can use it for the drill. Corrupted golden bands of Grimnir. Empowered great drill. Defeated demons of the sunken sewers. Or claim it for yourself. Defeated the demons of the sunken sewers. The golden bands of Grimnir as a relic, uh, as an enchanted item, I think, actually. And then Conclave plus three, Conclave influence plus 300. They they go over it here, so let's go ahead and wait till he, he hovers over it in just a second. Ah, oh, right. Back, back. There we go. So that's what the corrupted bands of Grimnir do? Whoa. Okay, yeah. So that gives me character experience. It gives me hero, uh, hero and lord recruit rank plus five, and then melee defense plus five for lords and embedded heroes, all armies. That is species spicy sausage. And then, no, uh, I don't think it showed me empowered to great grill, great drill. I wondered if that also gave me a passive of some sort. I assume it goes towards that great drill. Um, there's like a status of what the great drill is working towards on the actual campaign objective. So I assume it goes towards that. You need to, and I think you need to empower it a certain number of times. Uh, the demons of the sunken sewers will be prevented <clears throat> from fighting during the final battle. That's kind of wild there. But of course, here is like an example of a lesser rune. You get the Corrupted Hammer of Smebnir, which is going to give armor for Chaos Dwarf infantry and weapon strength for Chaos Dwarf infantry. All armies faction wide. 15% weapon strength, dude. That is really juicy if you use it for the drill. Now, of course, claiming it just basically gives you the individual <clears throat> item that you get the bonus for and your in your conclave influence, which you use to claim seats. So it's basically, do you want to buff your faction? Do you want to buff your character and your uh, conclave influence? And just kind of how you want to do that. And it also fits the direction of your campaign. These are essentially quest battles for each one of these locations, which is pretty cool. You know, defeat the Falling Lord's Army in the battle, uh, Kritka, Sacred Host of Teapok. Or Tepok, whatever. Potato, potato. It's a made-up name anyway. Um, actually, I don't think that one is. But either way, moving forward here. Is this the one I wanted to look at? Yeah, yeah. This, so this one's pretty sweet. We get a little uh, fight with uh, the vampire counts. And is that Graveguard? Okay, so here is our caster. Here is our uh, demon smith. And I would assume, of course, a sorcerer prophet would be the actual lord level caster. This guy is the a caster of fire. But look at his stat profile, dude. He is on foot, I believe. I'm trying to find him on the battlefield. Because this is Zatan the Black right there. Uh, no, Zatan's right there. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Never mind. Never mind. I was like, dude, his weapon strength is jacked. He's on a Bale Taurus. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, he's on a Bale Taurus because I can see the flaming wings. So he's on a Bale Taurus right now. And the Bale Taurus does some pretty wild shit here. So he's 637 weapon strength, um, flaming ammunition, of course. It's going to set things ablaze to reduce their uh, leadership and AP missile strength because this thing can, can shoot and uh, dump, of course. <clears throat> he does have a breath attack as well. So that is pretty wild. 90 armor, 56 melee attack, 54 melee defense with wep or, uh, with uh, fire damage as well, because again, he is on the Bale Taurus. Moving this just slightly forward. Uh, what spell was he using? Oh, he was using, um, that's right, the Lore of Fire. It's on the black. So, oh no, get away, get away from it. Where is it? Uh, 
Well, here's the infernal. We can look at this later, but here's the infernal fire sworn since we're here. Um, 50, 152 armor. 152 armor. It's disgusting. 80 melee defense. 54 melee attack. 100 in the unit. And they have a, um, a precursor fire, right? They have a two ammunition little precursor shot. That's 42 weapon strength uh, with AP damage or missile strength. That's pretty spicy, dude. I mean, of course, they're 12 charge bonus and they have nice 42 weapon strength. But like, dude, that is really good. And silver shields, and that, they're going to be a spicy, spicy little sausage, quite literally. So Tom the Black, we can't see much here, but we do get what his sadistic snare does. It works like an effigy of the git in that it will... Um, Oh, oh, affects enemies in range. I thought it was a single target from when I first looked at this. I'm so sorry. So affects enemies in range, max one. Okay, no, no, I was right. Um, so it's FG to get because it's going to single target something down. Melee defense minus 24, cannot move. 20 meters, 33 seconds with a minute and a half, or that's a two-minute cooldown. Affects enemies in range, max one. So it'll lock down a unit or a hero or a lord or whatever it is. So it's not a full-on net of Amontok, um, and it's not a single target effigy to get in the sense that it will only target one thing. It'll lock down a whole entire unit if you so wish. I think effigy to get, if I can remember properly, is a, oh, there it was, is a... Um, uh, Lord and Hero selection choice only, but you guys can, of course, feel free to help me out with that. So Tom the Black, magical weapon negation, contempt can cause us terror. Uh, keep in mind, he is on a Lamasu right now, so I don't know if that magical weapon negation is part of the Lamasu, or if it's part of his weapon profile or, or armor profile. You can see that he does have that armor right there uh, behind where it says uh, CD Zatan Showcase. Um, so that is pretty spicy. His Profile is 105 armor, 85 speed because he's on the Lamasu, 49 with Sundering attacks. Now, I'm not sure if that's because of the Lamasu or because of his axe. And then 833 weapon strength, bonus versus large, and a AP. Again, unsure if that profile is influenced by the Lamasu or his uh, axes, which he seems to have an axe profile giving him a passive bonus. And this right here, I'm not sure what that's, where that's coming from, um, but... Also regeneration, we can see regeneration on an icon there. Perfect vigor, I think that's what that one is. Okay, we got all his typical resistances for being a single uh, single entity, but very curious what he just looks like on foot. Got bombard coming off here, so this is where we get to the rest of the infernal iron sworn iron guard. Again, here is the infernal iron sworn. We saw this bad boy, but let's go forward just a little bit more, and we get the infernal guard. Still, oh, crispy 127 armor. I'm assuming there's a lot, there's some sort of um, faction benefit that's coming into him because 127 is a, is a pretty random number. Usually it's like 120. So I think we can also apply that logic to the Infernal Fire Sworn. Maybe that's like a flat 140 or something. But still, Infernal Guard coming in at 127 armor, 43 melee attack, 72 melee defense with 42 weapon strength. So very similar profile. Uh, you're getting more armor and more de melee defense on your Fire Sworn by comparison. But um, unfortunately, we can't see their upkeep in this menu. And I, maybe we can if, we, if I try to really get spicy with it. So here's the great weapon variant coming with 44. So get two more weapon strength. But now you're looking at AP. Um, they do have charge defense as well. So not, that is worth noting on both of them. They do have charge defense. Um, that melee defense still is pretty good for a great weapon unit at 61. That's great for a great weapon unit. So they're still going to be able to defend pretty well, considering they still have 120 armor, they still have 61 at melee defense, but they're going to be dishing out some good AP damage instead. <clears throat> Skullcracker, we can see this little guy as well. So Skullcracker coming in with uh, 115 armor, 200 weapon strength. That is both AP and bonus versus infantry. Not sure what this little icon is, but it is unbreakable. It's a siege breaker. And I'm not sure what that one is either. Uh, we... Of course, fire is just to be had and the single entity wound thing. <clears throat> but uh, melee attack 41, but 17 melee defense is going to be really rough for this bad boy. Uh, hoping that something on this shows us. I mean, it's Hellforge, so I'm hoping some of these things kind of say, oh, it's like a demon engine or whatever, and it, it's harder to hit or something of the sort. But 17 melee defense might not make this thing the coolest boy in town. So we'll see how that works. Collision attacks too is on the profile, so we'll see what's up, what's up with that. Uh... Was there anything else I wanted to show in this section? I mean, just look at that, dude. Those are a little precursor shot that they get. 
So basically the same thing as Iron Breakers. Um, I, you know what? The, the Infernal Iron Sworn might have the exact same profile as the Iron Breakers. I'm so hyped up that I just, I'm just like, it's the best. <laughs> so please correct me if I'm wrong there in the comment section below. I, I, what Iron Breakers I thought are 140 armor, 150 armor. Still really good regardless. Kind of pushing through this again. We get the bull centaurs. Colonel guard with great weapons. Dude, look at this llama suit just taken. Look at look at the tandem here. That is so sick. Oh, it's a great Taurus. I thought it was a bale Taurus because of the flaming wings. So I apologize. The uh, demon smith is on a great Taurus, not a bale Taurus. I mean, that, that looked like a that looked like a bale Taurus right there, right? Uh, yeah, that looks like a bale Taurus. Must be just, must just they must have to put him on a different mount for that shot. Um, but here we go, the sorcerer prophet <clears throat> of Hashit. We can see him on foot now. Uh, we see he also has a gun in his hand, so he is a axe wielding, gun toting little badass. 120 armor, 87 leadership, 32 speed, 44 melee attack. That is magical. 42 melee defense with a 363 weapon strength. Uh, flaming shots coming out here at 135 missile. Uh, strength with AP and that uh, the burning thing that, that reduces their uh, leadership. So that is our Sorcerer Prophet, the Lord level hero. As you can see, that is a Lord versus the Demon Smith, which would be the hero caster. And we see his Lord of Hashet. I mean, to psychology, hide, encourage, resilience, dark subjugation. I wonder what that is. And burning wrath. It was burning wrath and dark subjugation. Oh, that, those are spells. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, that's probably just part of the Lord of Hashet. <clears throat> and as we kind of jump forward here, did we get any unit card stuff? Oh, I don't think we missed it. Yeah, I think we didn't. I think they I think they were being clever about it. Uh, but this is cool too. That we get kind of a little bit of a preview here of <coughs> apologize there of what the building line is kind of like for the infrastructure for the chaos dwarfs. Now, none of this is recruitment, right? None of this causes recruitment. But it's all of it is one to four, or so this is one to four, one to five, one, three, five, three, five, and then a five. So the infrastructure buildings are going to be pretty interesting to see how they kind of uh, play their hand as it pertains to your like factories and the smaller little minor settlements that you build out. Because the infrastructure buildings all are like tier five, tier four buildings. Um, very interesting on that. But we have the Temple of Hashit here, which gives you Conclave influence. It's also going to give Diplomatic Relations recruitment rank and win some magic bonuses. But it seems that a lot of buildings have technology, kind of exploding technology things, that if you do it, it gives you this thing as well, right? Uh, effect unlocked when technology, Hashit reverence, research, Conclave influence gain plus five per turn. So pretty spicy there. We'll kind of jump ahead. Dude, just look at that guy. Look at this dude looking all badass and everything. I, I don't know why the hats add to it. They should be ridiculous. I who the immortals over there in the background right there <clears throat> and the hobgoblin. I think that's the first time we've actually seen the hobgoblin archers in something like this. And they're they're on the right, right here by the front of the llama Sioux. Little guy, little guys looking all sick. Just, but I mean, the rest of this for the most part, I'm not gonna lie, is very. Like stuff we've already seen so we see higher quotas as one of the other um commandments you can do so income refinery buildings and armaments output is increased some more management in this you have the convoy system as well looking going off here giving us some benefits now remember the convoy system is pretty nice in that different spots give different things so the input and output is different per location so it gives you different opportunities to go to these locations and you can see too i mean like Grung Zint, Bay of Blades. So as you really expand, you get more and more options to kind of go and do convoys with and get different things. Uh, this is both of these are examples of gold in laborers. Oh, oh, so this is gold in. This is uh, raw materials out, and this is laborers out. But sometimes it'll give you armaments, plenty of options and choices to be had, um, and then units that you can add to the list. Ah, the dread. Oh, okay, so we got the sneaky gits. We've already seen these guys. We've already seen these guys, but the Iron Demon Dreadquake Mortar. So, 100 armor, 60 speed, 41 melee attack, 24 melee, I don't care about those stats, um, but 
196 missile strength at 380 range. And it's got a special little attack here. Watch this little bad boy go off. I thought it actually exploded. I remember seeing it explode, I thought. Oh, the Death Streaker rocket launcher. We can see that little guy too. Oh, here's the uh, the Overseer. Or whoever the hero level uh, uh, Chaos Dwarf hero is. We can see him. 70 armor. Is he 70 armor? That seems really low. This is melee specialist though. 70 armor. I mean, looking at the, the picture over here and the actual unit icon, it's kind of low, man. Well, 70 armor. <laughs> 39 uh, speed, which is which has been lowered, right? Or is this actually the Bull Centaur, just a different just a different angle? That actually might be it. But it's 550. Yeah, that's probably that makes more sense. If his speed is 39 and it's and it's uh reduced, this is probably the Bull Centaur. I apologize. But 552 weapon strength AP with centering attacks coming out of him. Oh my god, look at that. There's Death Streaker Rocket Launcher. So this bad boy has a 420 range with 197 AP. Now it does have two separate firing modes and it looks like we are on the anti-infantry one. And the other one looks like it's probably going to be bonus versus large. We don't know much about those modes just yet aside from the fact that they exist. And the lore for them from the uh, Tamarcon book was one was better at a higher strength, like single target damage. The other one was better at shooting um, fragmentation rockets that do more damage towards um, uh, towards infantry. But magic and fire damage coming out of those shots as well. Collision attacks, armor piercing, hell forged, armored, all that fun action. Did I miss anything else over here? Yeah, we have the, the bull breaker dude. Oh, I can't tell if he's on a mount or not. I don't think so he is. I don't think he is this time. Yeah, I think this guy's just on foot. Yeah, 363 weapon strength. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Pfft. That's the Lord. <sighs> Another episode of I'm Dumb. I'm Dumb. So pushing forward here. Yeah, this was the shot I love. Like... Just look at this army, man. This is going to be so fun to play as the Chaos Dwarves. And just have these little tiny blazing beards of Bazarak. Now we see the regiments of renown. So flaming attacks coming out of them at 54, uh, being buffed by whatever means. Uh, 63 melee defense coming for them. 38 weapon strength. They also have a precursor AP missile attack in them. That 38 weapon or missile strength uh, and a 70 range. So <clears throat> looks like just a, a much different. Oh, they also have frenzy. Frenzy and immune psychology. So these guys are going to be pretty, pretty intense. I, I don't, I don't remember the chaos war. The chaos wars. I don't remember having any kind of precursor attack in their profile. So they get a precursor attack, frenzy, and immune psych. That's pretty wild for a uh, a regiment of renown unit having a lot of a lot of functionality there. So the fire glaive unit. We also can see that now. Again, one fifteen armor, looking nice and crispy. Ooh, that's nice actually too. We can see the Infernal Guard with great weapons. Oh, they, okay. So 115 with the Fire Glaive. I, I thought it was a, a different number here. So Fire Glaives have 115 armor coming in with 36 melee attack. Still 54 melee defense. I mean, it is a tier three unit, so that's nice, but um, you'd get 20 less in this because they are a Fire Glaive. So you have a missile range of 145. That's pretty goddamn good. I, I wasn't expecting to be one, a full 145. But 44 weapon strength, flaming attacks out of this, and AP damage. Um, and they also get a charge bonus versus large. So it's still going to be a pretty stalwart unit that can hold the line. Um, worth noting, too, that is a glaive. So even if they're not shooting that thing, they're getting a bonus versus large and AP damage on a 34 weapon strength uh, weapon versus the Great Warriors are just that bonus versus, um, or, or sorry, are just that straight AP damage at 44 or 42 weapon strength. It's right. It's right here. We'll, we'll figure that out. Infernal Iron Sworn. Okay, so it is it is truly 152 unmodified, by the way. I think it was 157 we saw earlier. So Fire Glaives, uh, 42, or uh, 32 weapon strength, 34 weapon strength, and I think the, the Great Warriors are at um, 42 or 44 weapon strength. But this is a cool little montage. We'll do all that kind of so it's on the black. Then it goes into a a, a, a sorcerer prophet. I think it jumps into another one too. Yeah, into like an overseer here or whatever the chaos uh, the, the chaos dwarf lord is. So 
Very, very, very exciting stuff here, guys. Kind of push forward more. Bale Taurus. I think we've seen these stats, but there you go. They're right there. 61 melee attacks, 44 defense, 540 AP. Uh, weapon strength coming out of them. Flaming, flaming attack, scaly skin. Dude, look at this thing, man. This is like the quote-unquote feral version, meaning that this just doesn't have a rider. <clears throat> Zal the Lash. So magical weapon negation. Oh, he's on a Lamasu again. I it, it fuck, I don't know if it's I so now I know it's not Zatan the Black unique to a weapon or item. It is the Lamasu or the Overseer has some style of magical weapon negation. Very excited to see what that looks like. Uh, unfortunately, this oh, he does have frostbite attacks, which is probably part of some weapon he has active. Um we don't know what his stats are really like uh because he's on that Lamasu. I think that's pretty much it, though. For Oh, the, the, the runes. Forgot. So, back into the Hellforge. We can go into this bad boy and get a sense for our missile infantry runes. Let me go back a little bit here. There we go. So, missile infantry. We saw what the we saw what our actual infantry right could do, but now we can see missile. And this is reload time reduction, enable suppressive fire, extra reload, stock, spell resistance, vanguard deployment, uh extra powder was at the bottom here. And that's those those for uh our uh, hellforge. Now we also are going to be able to see our bull centaurs. I have to go just a little bit before this so I can see what that Right before the tooltip pops up. Okay. So Devastating Flanker, Murderous Charge, Vanguard Deployment, Strength from Flesh, which looks like some sort of recovery. Or, um, uh, it's probably a regen while in combat. Strength from Flesh. or imagine something like that, like an eating thing. Uh, attribute Hellforged again. So that's the icon for Hellforged now that we see it. Barrier hit points. Ooh. Give him 800 barrier with Visage of Fear. Uh, looks like Cause Terror. Murderous charge, mass increase, charge bonus, charge speed, and acceleration. We already know Vanguard. Uh, blood greed. So that's uh, okay. So strength from flesh is just probably a straight up um, regen. Whereas blood greed, we know how that really works from. Okay, this so now we can see blood greed. Um, we know how that works from dealing with plenty of chaos and Minotaur stuff in the past. So that is. For the most part, our wrap up here. Um, I don't think there's anything cool in this video. Yeah, they don't. Oh, Bull Centaur renders with dual axes, 114 weapon strength, AP, as well as bonus versus infantry. Uh, 62 speed on them, so very, very quick. 53 melee attack and 60 melee defense still. That's, that's pretty good. Against their miners, more dual axes. I didn't think we had unicards in this very much because usually they don't do it in these little quest battles. Back a little bit. Minus with blasting charges. Infernal Guard with great weapons. It was, it was 44 with centering attacks. <clears throat> oh, it's centering attacks, not AP. Wow. Infernal Guard with great weapons are so good. The Tom the Black, of course. This is a really cool shot. So, this kind of brings our video here to a close. Going over everything. I mean, we've seen the, the Chaos Dwarf Blunderbuss and stuff like that. Um, but I'm really excited for this DLC. I don't know about you guys, but I am stoked on it. Dude, look at that thing. <laughs> Dreadquake Mortar. That's a Dreadquake Mortar going off. I knew I saw it somewhere. Um, I think this is going to be awesome. I think it's really going to change the balance of power in the Darklands. And I think it adds a faction that is increasingly cool as hell. Every time I look at another thing for this, I'm like, that is fucking awesome. Every time it's another cool little thing with these guys. It's like finding out more facts about owls. You know, it's always something with these assholes. So I'm really, really stoked on it, guys. Really fired up for this DLC. We'll be seeing it April 13th going live. Um, hopefully we'll jump into some early access uh, coming in the next week or two. I would assume so, you know, with the 13th around the corner. Um, but... We now know quite a lot more about the actual individual campaign mechanics, how the Hellforge works, how the labor mechanic works, how the convoys work, how the conclave works. There is so much stuff layered into the Chaos Dwarfs. So go ahead and let me know in the comment section below how you're feeling about this, if you are as stoked as I am on this DLC, or if you're like, meh, I could wait. I could, I could hold off. Um, 
I didn't think I'd be excited for anything dwarf related in a long time, but here we are playing these guys and I'm just absolute jazz hands about it. But don't forget to use that uh, Creative Assembly affiliate link in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching here today, but have a good one and take care.